tough Panzer Grenadiers. And there's always a risk, when you've got infantry deployed, there's always a risk to your armour that some of these guys might be packing something like a Panzer Faust or a Panzer Shrek. So I'm guessing that our Allied Force Commander is going to deploy some infantry if he's got them to try and flush out the German infantry, to try and protect his armour from those shoulder-launched anti-tank weapons. And arguably, a long-term anti-tank gun, such as the shoulder-launched anti-tank weapon and the mine, which did most of the tank killing in the last desperate months of World War II. resources they have. Unlike the Allies, who have a more or less endless supply of, of equipment by this stage, the Germans are very, very limited. We can see uh, a deuce and a half coming in, JMC lorry coming in. Um, these lorries were built in their hundreds of thousands during World War II and effectively allowed ammunition supplies to be brought up to the front line and also troops, we've got some more troops coming out so the Panzer Grenadiers here are outnumbered this is not looking that good for the Germans there's a very brave couple there in the jeep well out of the way. There was an attempt to mount recoilless anti-tank guns on jeeps right at the end of the war. Ah, that the Grenadiers have noticed the flank being moved by the Americans. They're trying to suppress that. The Americans have got the high ground. Ah, now some medium armour coming in. M482. Okay, you know what it is, it's Fury. Right? But it is an M482, it's not an easy A. Which I think most people think it is. It's an M482 mounting the American version of that 70 pounder that we saw this morning. This is the long 76. Ah, some fire coming in now on them. And not just. Not just Fury, but also, I can see over there, an M18 Hellcat. Now the Hellcat needs to be a little bit careful. The Hellcat's a tank destroyer. It's mounting that same high velocity 76 gun in a light, quick chassis. The Hellcat is capable of doing 50 miles an hour on a road, and that is 
truly terrifying for a tank. 50 miles an hour wind on the road, but it is open topped. The Americans had this philosophy that the tank was a breakthrough weapon and didn't therefore need to be too heavily armoured. And if you came up against heavy armour, you whistled up a tank destroyer with a bigger gun on it. It's the Hellcat. Um, the British op operate something called the M10 Achilles. It's a similar kind of idea, but that's it. There's a bazooka operation. Now the bazooka is a rather more sophisticated version of the sort of shoulder launch weapon the Germans were using. It's got a shot of her, doesn't it? It's connected to the The balance of power here is, is shifting very much in that white paper. Ah, right, the 251's been hit. 251's hit, she's on fire. The Americans have a lot they need to watch themselves, these flanking armored cars and lay down on the wall of fire. But here comes the Sherman. Surrender. 
I have to say, one or two of those Panzer Grenadiers don't look quite so battle hardened as I thought they were. This was also the case. Hitler youth would be moved directly into frontline forces. And again, you're often. Hello, what's going on? Is somebody trying to surrender and firing at the same time? Ah, no, there's still some active behind the dugging over there. I have to say that was a problem. Forces, troopers pretending to surrender and then engaging the enemies they came to, to, to take that surrender. It resulted in the fact that a lot of troopers, not just Americans on it, it British as well, would not take a surrender. But now the remainder have decided that the game's up. As I say, some of them do look really rather young. I'm sure you've seen the photographs in the history books of 15, 16 year old German troops surrendering, often in tears. <coughs> But the GIs are taking no chances of you know, keeping those prisoners well covered. They themselves have taken casualties. They're not going to be in a good mood. Remember, they are resentful that they're having to do this this late in the war. We're already into 1945 because the Chaffee wasn't deployed in the American Army until the Battle of the Bulge, right at the end of 1944. Uh, the British recce troops have come in. There's the Dingo in the front and the Daimler. Both of these vehicles were so good that in fact they were in use well into the 1950s with the British Army. And the Daimler Dingo was replaced by a vehicle which was almost exactly the same, a vehicle called the Ferret. Which I have to say is the only armoured vehicle I had the opportunity to command on one occasion. But there we are, the GIs are getting up the, the prisoners. Andy Hawk, come on. 